How's it going everyone, College Lefty, and in this video, I'm going for a 12 win event run, or at least trying to get uh, in a good position to win a 12 win diamond. If I don't win six games in a row, I have uh, another loss, or at least one loss to work with along the way. Now I have gone 12 and 0 in this event, or actually the previous event, uh, once before, I was able to win Cattell Marte. So for this event, it is on Hall of Fame difficulty where you are only allowed to use live series cards. So that can be face of the franchise diamonds who also have a live series or anybody that's currently playing, whether it's a flashback like that Hanley Ramirez would be eligible, different cards like that. So as you see here, we're facing Corey Kluber, the 99 overall version and hit a a solo shot to start the ball game off with Joey Gallo. So that was nice. Go up one nothing. We have Glaber Torres coming up to the plate. A seeing eye single. Luckily, his second baseman dove. I thought he might have been able to make that play. But we're up one already in the bottom of the first. Matt Olson coming up to the plate. And I'll probably put this card in my ranked seasons lineup a little bit more. I've kind of uh, tried out a couple different first basemen as of recently. So I wanted to uh, put that Matt Olson in the lineup. I've tried Anthony Rizzo out. I want to uh, make a debut video for a couple of these Face of the Franchise Diamonds that I have not uh, gone ahead and done so yet. So we'll be uh, we'll be pushing for that. But I'm looking to win some Live Series Diamonds and try to earn some stubs. So we hit a nice Grand Slam. Good first inning here. Carlos Correa, Face of the Franchise. I know in my rankings, people said that that Correa are, is a lot better than what I had him ranked. And the only reason I had him ranked a little bit lower, same type of thing with Matt Olson is because I don't really have that much of a sample size. Most of the gameplay I've used those cards with has been on All-Star in the event. So I'm not quite sure how they really play on Hall of Fame or the harder difficulties in the game. I like to get a good sample size before I determine you know, where these specific cards rank in uh, in order and which ones I personally like to use. So anyway, in this gameplay, we're going up against E-Man Gaming. I will uh, post a link to some of his content. I I noticed that we were going up against each other when he uh, tweeted me that our, our matchup screen. He tweeted out that he matched up with me. I didn't know because it doesn't say anywhere that it's E-Man Gaming, but I see that down there at the bottom right, EG7. So uh, this is definitely him. He's a great player. So far, I got a little bit lucky that that Carlos Santana hit was not a home run. We get a strikeout facing Gallo, and that was a really good pitch from Otani. I was having a tough time locating a little bit with Otani. Uh, very first batter of the game, actually second batter, Mike Trout, pops that one up. I got under that one. I felt like that was a hittable pitch. I just dropped the PCI, missed it barely, and uh, popped up into foul territory. Once again, I got a little bit lucky that this ball right here wasn't sent out for a home run. This Glaber Torres is incredible, and I know that E-Man Gaming is a good hitter, so I got lucky that he just barely missed that one as well. We uh, we didn't really get the bats going in this one so far. Second inning, almost got an error right there with Glaber Torres. Not quite sure what happened with that animation. He almost just gave up on the ball. I was pressing right on the left stick the entire time. But once again, another hard hit ball right to the center fielder. He's He seemed to be uh, hitting the ball right to my guys out there but now we're facing Charlie Morton first pitch that he throws sends it out for a home run Glaber Torres that card is an absolute machine I mean this card hit a home run for me a clutch home run in my previous ranked seasons game he always seems to come up clutch with those no doubt home runs and that no doubt animation his swing is just so nice and it's a two-handed swing which is different than his original one-handed swing so the following at bat, I missed one with Matt Olson. Popped up a fastball. Squared another one up with Carlos Correa. This card is pretty good. I like his swing. He always seems to hit the ball pretty hard. Now we have Santana up. And I got under another fastball. I mean, he missed one with his Carlos Santana. I missed that one with Santana. Just unfortunate. Uh, but in a one-run ball game, I really can't afford to miss a pitch like that. Especially going up against a good player like E-Man Gaming. He is a good hitter. I have seen some of his clips on uh, Twitter as well as uh, Instagram, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that. I know I've seen him post some highlights on Twitter and tag me in those. So uh, I know that he's a good player. He knows what he's doing. He's played uh, quite a few games. He had a pretty good record as well in ranked season. So uh, right here, he gets something going. Tying run at third base. Curtis Granderson off the bench, comes up clutch. We, we got to face Lindor, his leadoff hitter. And Lindor has a really glitchy swing. He has the dead red quirk. So I was trying not to throw a fastball, even though I went with the splitter, which is kind of a form of a fastball. It's a split-fingered fastball, and he'll still have that quirk activated on that pitch. 
but it's not a straight fastball. We got out of it in that situation. Now we have the double play set up, and luckily he swung at that pitch. That was a slurve down and in. I had a couple good pitches, good feedback pitches, and I just couldn't locate with uh, Roberto Osuna. But we kind of played some strategic matchups in that last game. It was a, it was a low-scoring game, one nothing. And I definitely got lucky. That was a, a good game all around. I thought for sure he was going to hit a three-run shot there. And I would put, have the pressure put on myself to try and tie it up in the bottom of the third. But let's go ahead and get into another one. So we're 8-0 right now. Start this ball game off with a base knock from Joey Gallo. That's going to be a double. The other way against the shift. A good, good hit. And that's exactly what I need. I need Joey Gallo to perform for me in the leadoff spot uh, previously when I was grinding out some of this game. Uh, grinding out XP, grinding out some missions. I was striking out a lot with Joey Gallo because of his small vision, his small contact attribute. But now that I've kind of got the timing back a little bit, I've been hitting with him and a lot other guys with small vision and PCIs a little bit better now. So I'm starting to get locked in at the plate, which is good. I need to uh, time the ball up. We get a quit in that last one going up against Mitch Keller and a pretty good team in this one, sitting at 9-0. and So we need to win three more games without losing two games and hopefully win a Christian Yelich, Araldis Chapman, uh, someone like that. Someone that's going for a good amount of stubs that people can use on their ranked seasons team or players that I see a lot of people use. Acuna would be nice. Anybody that's around 30K or more for an 85 to 89 diamond is would be great. That would be exactly what I'm looking for. I don't want to get someone like uh, Altuve or Walker Bueller or Clayton Kershaw. I don't want any of those guys. I want a, a solid 88, 89 diamond. And I know it's luck of the draw. We got to still win three games. So we have a two run lead. Right here, Juan Soto with a double. We need to continue on with the bat. We need to get the bats going. We didn't really put up that many runs in that last game. I missed some pitches. Right here, I got a uh, home run, no doubter. Wasn't a no doubt animation, but the fielders didn't even react to that one. The PCI was not even close to the ball. I guess it was barely touching, but it, I was way under that ball. I mean, this is a better hit. A perfect, perfect grounder from Matt Olson. But uh, you just never know what you're going to get. Sometimes it, it can be with the pitcher's confidence. Sometimes it can be with the hit chance and the feedback that the pitcher threw the ball with. It just There's a lot of variables that go into it. Uh, the clip kind of cut out right there, but that was a double off the wall with Juan Soto. That sets up Glaber Torres, who's been on an absolute tear for me. Curveball up in the zone at this point. He doesn't really have any confidence. That's probably not where he's looking to throw that pitch. But the confidence meter, the energy meter is down significantly. He's thrown 19 pitches. Look at the size of the PCI. And all you have to do at this point is wait for a ball over the middle of the plate. If he doesn't take his pitcher out, then I'm going to have some, uh, some at-bats. I'm going to try to get a pitch over the middle. He's definitely going to throw it eventually. It's just a matter of time. And anytime you make contact with the ball, it's going to be hit over 100 miles an hour. It's going to be a missile sent out into the field it's going to be extremely difficult to get strikeouts it's going to be extremely difficult to have the fielders make the play because these balls are hit so hard i mean i wasn't even on that one hits off the wall hits off his right fielder's head and he can't pick it up out there it took him a little bit the center fielder ended up picking that ball up but i scored on an inside the park home run so three home runs in a row the announcer thinks that one was over the fence so he's all confused. We got Carlos Santana coming up. Seth Lugo still in the game and his long motion. All you have to do is be patient, wait for a pitch over the middle of the plate, and I hit out another home run, fourth home run in a row. And this, at this point, he has red stamina. He has no energy. I'm swinging 3-0. Anytime he's going to throw a strike, I'm going to try and swing and make contact. Sure, this could also mess me up. For the next game. The next game I go into, the pitcher is going to have good confidence. The PCI is going to be a, a much smaller than this. So, honestly, I would just like it if this dude quit out so that way I could get into another one. We're up by 13 runs. There, I thought uh, for sure he went ahead and turned off his PlayStation, but it looks like we ended up taking the L for that game. I was up 13 0. I thought that that was a two run shot. I thought he, he rage quit or just, you know, had enough of that last game. And we end up losing. So that was our flawless run right there. It's all good because we'll still have a chance to uh, win three games in a row for a diamond. But that's a big swing of events. I would have only had to win two more games with having a loss still available. Now I don't. I have to win three games straight. And I'm probably going to go up against someone who's going to absolutely destroy me. But anyway, I uh, got Bob Gibson's missions complete. 
So I unlocked his diamond, but that's going to do it for this video. I'm College Lefty, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.